All right, so we're here uh, together, and uh, we've got myself, Dave, and Nick. Hello. Hello. Yeah, and I decided we'll to... We'll do that out of order to confuse everybody. Yeah, we'll do that out of order, too. Hello. Do you want to say hello now? No, I've already done it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, I thought that we should have you on, Nick, because after listening to all the audio that you and I got from our hunting experience mm-hmm. together, uh, we didn't really talk about... <laughs> the hunt itself at all so i'm sure people are like well how did it go did you get anything and the answer to that question is find no. out at the end of this podcast yeah, yeah find out at the <laughs> stick around at the end, yeah, stick around the end. Uh, but anyways i thought that we could kind of rehash it uh you know and and get your idea of how it all went you can even critique me as a an instructor and i don't you know be harsh because i like critiques so well i mean he, I, he doesn't he doesn't be gentle sh- oh, no, 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 i have I to know, deal I with him next I, week I, I, <laughs> I, I read his i read his book cover to cover nice. and i i sent a, a short well there was nothing short about that dissertation <laughs> there was nothing short about it <laughs> you know it, it was on legal header <laughs> yeah, I, I sent it over. I had my secretary fax it over with uh, on yeah. my letterhead. No, I will say this about you reading the book. Uh, I, first of all, I do really appreciate you taking the time to read it. Secondly, all of that insight that you gave was like super awesome, and I'm going to consider, if not, put in almost all of those comments that no you, no that you had made hold your ground stick to your creative no, genius his, it, it don't had, let him rewrite your book <laughs> it has nothing <laughs> i'm giving you credit man yeah. this uh, see I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna tag my just ride coattails tag myself right. on yeah there. i i will i will and say i will be a semi-published author <laughs> that's right or a published you hey, know man, ghost you i'm a famously I'm noted no I'll put uh, both on there. a critic. local local podcast listener and celebrity guest nick roop uh no, yeah, it wasn't like a lot of like creative alterations. It was more like format and flow of the content and stuff like that that I really agreed with after, you know, hearing it from him. Well, and it's it's one of those things where you you know you're writing it and you're putting you're taking all of these thoughts that you have and you're ejecting them from your brain onto paper, and it makes sense to you, right? Right. <clears throat> but when you have a third party come in that that hasn't maybe shared those life experiences that's when things maybe appear to be in a different order, you know, right. than what you had intended mm-hmm. and having, I think having a, a person who's completely disconnected from it, critique it and review it helps out a lot because it can kind of give you perspective because you as the author, this all totally makes sense, but you want it to make sense to your readers. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So I, I will say like, I've had people read the various stories prior to you reading it mm-hmm with that idea in mind, right? Having someone who's removed from it, look at it and critique it. The difference with you is specifically, you are in a career field that deals with legal verbiage and flow and content and how it all kind of works together from beginning to end. And so those insights are really useful. Um, I try. (laughs) Yeah, thank you for trying all five pages front and back. Yep. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) No, but anyways, okay, so uh, we went out on the the tenth, which was a Friday, yep. and we did some scouting. Bumped a bumped a couple deer. We bumped four does. Story of my life. While walking up on that carcass, that elk carcass. We were distracted. Yeah, which we did notice had some uh, hoof rot yep. on it on one of the yeah, back. Which is kind of sad. It yeah, is. it is totally sad. Um, unfortunately, that is a thing, and they are making some steps to try and like. They're trying to. They're trying, you know, to curb it. Curb it. But, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, like the situation where we're in right now with the, you know, unspecified virus of unknown origin, where, you know, it's one of those things where it's going. We're we have to adapt. The elk have to adapt. We have to work things out. They have to work things out. Eventually, things will get back to normal for them. And, and just so we're clear, we're talking about the elk adapting to hoof rot, not COVID. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, the unknown <laughs> virus of unknown Yeah, you got to avoid certain right. keywords. Okay, right, okay, sorry. So, <laughs> but that, that goes back to something we've talked about in the past, though, that that hunting does help yep. with hoof rot. It keeps the herd size to a manageable level, which keeps disease and things that run through a herd also down. Yeah, did you see in the, the, the regs this year, they actually stated that you could get a second elk tag. If you shot an elk and it had hoof rot, right. you provide that limb 
uh, and, and and you no, show the proof, right? right. Uh, you can get a it, you get a, you a, get bonus a second tag. Drawing. Well, now they, they used to call it a was it a quality harvest tag or something like that. It's been around for a while, but I'm glad that they're stating specific cases now. Yeah, I mean, it's the first time I've read it. Uh, in the, I'm pretty sure it's in there. Now you got me saying I yes to myself. When I don't you think say, it was always. I don't think been a that specifically for like the the bonus draw this year was in the regs as much as it is in the uh, WDFW messaging. Yeah. Because I know cool. I've seen that before, and it is cool. Um, and that, you know, talking about that, that's something that a lot of non-hunters, and like even before I started hunting, didn't really get. That mm-hmm. hunting's not just about filling your freezer full of delicious animals, but also there's a, the, the whole conservation side of it, um, which I think is what makes people mad about, like, you know, your safari hunts, where, like, they're, oh, you killed an elephant, you killed a giraffe. And it's like, yeah, but that's the oldest, biggest male that was preventing everyone else from you know, having a good time during the rut. Right. Like, there's things that have to happen. Yeah, in sometimes order to make their, sure. their presence in the herd actually yep. decreases <clears throat> the, you know, the, the increase rate. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And if you look at, you know, for those that don't hunt, you haven't been, you know, around it, uh, there are game management units that are set up by the, you know, Department of Fish and Wildlife. And they change what's you know, what you're allowed to hunt in that area based on the herd population. Yep. You know, and so if we need to control size or if we need to boost size, you know, if, it, if it's getting a little low, they will change what you're allowed to hunt. A little bit, And yeah. that's why that's why mm-hmm. poaching is so bad because you have these people that are, you know, killing animals. They're not, I mean, they're illegally killing the animals in the first place, but also those animals aren't being reported. So right. if you have someone who goes out and kills six or ten deer... No, that that doesn't get entered into whatever spreadsheet you know the DFW has. Right. Then you know they proceed business as usual. Mm-hmm. Now you have all the people that are legally hunting these animals, and there's in, a massive decrease mm-hmm. in the population size. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So with so that being said, you that's scared... how we totally get off tangent there. So with that being said, you got <laughs> into an area with a lot of deer. Apparently, they needed a you know to be yeah, cold. Yeah, needed a focus. And you just on let dose. them all walk away, or no, what was so that? You didn't we want to jump keep them? these four does and and we tried to put a play on them i tried to get um nick to kind of flank him on the right and i was just kind of going directly at him but slow and uh the as i'm watching him kind of run back and forth their behavior was telling me that they were younger except for the one the one was a completely like auburn ish color Mm -hmm. and she just took off that one was the adult female the other two small grayer ones, those were the like yearling, maybe 18 month olds. Mm. And one of them went hopping into the tree line. And what the younger ones will do is they'll hop around kind of frantic and then they'll hold up just inside the tree line and turn around and look and just stand there and watch you. Because mm-hmm. they're curious. They don't know what you are or what kind of danger you represent. This is their first instance with you because they were just born right after last hunting season. So they don't they're know what you are. They're mildly spooked. They're not yeah, scared. Exactly. So this one held up, and uh, I was trying to get a play on it because it was big enough to harvest. So I was trying to get a play on it, and uh, I was getting closer, and I got to like 60 yards, and I kind of tell that like, one, she wasn't going to let me get any closer without taking off. Uh, and so I was just hoping that maybe I'd get her to come back out or something and, and present herself because I didn't have a shot. There was a bush in the way. All I could see was her head. So then... Uh, she kind of went over the edge. So instead of going straight after her, I cut straight to the tree line, which was on my left. And I went down over the hill, which if I had known that hill was as steep as it was, I wouldn't have done this. <laughs> because it was like a, sh- like, I thought just, it was just like a straight drop. <laughs> yeah, it was just like a straight. Just see his head disappear. Oh, no. And there was deer trails and stuff that led down, but I just went like straight down. And uh, it was like 60 feet to the bottom. And then... Um, I caught up with it at the bottom and I had a play at 25 yards. I drew down as soon as I came settled in at my anchor and had my pin on her, she took off. So we did get to draw down on an animal, but not for very long. Right. And she took off and well, I appreciate this is the, what it is. I appreciate that you took the time to make sure your anchor, your sight, your peep, all that was dialed before ripping one, you know, letting it fly. Yeah. We've discussed that before. I hate a rushed shot. You know, I, I feel if you don't have time to get anchored, you didn't have time for the shot. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, people will argue with me, but oh yeah, I mean, I was... it's not. It's not. You just don't point your bow at something and pull the trigger, and now you have food, right? Right. There's there's, there's way more steps. I mean, I'm not saying that hunting with a rifle is easy by any means, but there's definitely fewer physical steps involved than archery. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I mean, because I mean, as long as that rifle is in your shoulder pocket and your eye is on the scope. It's easy to align where that bullet's going to hit. But in archery, you know, you've got your anchor point, you've got your your front hand up, you're trying to create your concentric circles, and you're trying to do this in the span of seconds, you know. Right. Right, because you're <clears> at a closer <throat> distance. I feel that it is easier to get into your your sight picture on a rifle oh, than it is 100%. on a bow. Um, but yeah, anyway, so you, you you decided to be ethical and not slap your trigger and hope for the best. Right, yeah, and that was a Friday, the 10th, yep. so elk wasn't even open yet. We were treating that as a, a scouting trip. Ah. Uh, so, you know, sorry. seeing that carcass was bad, and we didn't really get a whole lot of time to scout because we got on those deer, mm -hmm. and then we started hunting instead of scouting, right? So... I decided, I problem. know the elk have been through there. It's a really popular area, regardless of the the, the carcass, which was like, it looked like it, it, it was probably a year like, old. Yeah. It was it was old. Oh, okay. So I thought maybe they'd be back anyway. So the next day we got up early, we went and headed down, we got in there, and uh, we actually we bumped into hunters on the way so in. So we're, we're walking down, like, because the spot we were at was probably a good, like, two miles into the woods, I'd mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. um, and we're walking down this road, like an old logging trail. And, um, you know, it's, it's dark. We're trying to see without, you know, making ourselves visible. So I think we had the red lights on and, you know, there's a couple down there. I think it was like a dude and his wife mm -hmm. just, they were, they were, uh, I don't know what they were doing, but they looked like they were headed the opposite way of us. Didn't even see them until they were like 30 feet in front of us. That's how dark and they, the dude, so he's... <laughs> He's in full camo, but he's also like full like commando makeup too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should say face paint, no, not they, makeup. Sorry. Their plan was to it head into the, the area thing. where we were heading, and I, so we whipped they out the to us. we whipped Did out they? the Onyx maps. That's cool. And we discussed like, okay, where are you headed versus where we were planning on going, so we weren't gonna like you know interfere with. We're, these, we're with not trying to hunt. blow somebody out if they yeah, want to. Exactly, because I mean, literally, they beat us there. Yeah. I mean, well, that's one of the things I do like about archery hunting is that from my experience and everyone else might be different, but my experience that they're all, we're all real willing to work that way. Like, Hey, I'm going this way. You're going that. Let's not trip on each other. Let's not hunt the same well, spot. Your experience is like that because you weren't with us on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So we got down into our spot. We found, you know, a, a nice ant free. I'm allergic to ants. So I'm not trying the spot we were looking at. There's a giant ant hill right in the middle of that, right? Nice. So we found this other spot on the opposite side of this uh, central meadow area. And we're sitting in there. We're completely invisible. We're waiting for animals to show up. And I want to say it's probably around like 7.30 or 8. Yeah, it was like uh, or, 45 minutes after yeah. first light. Okay. Uh, he Maybe he starts hour. making the elk cow call, right? Yeah, sure. I was doing my cow. My and as, <laughs> as a city person, it sounds like something an animal would make to me but i know that it's him so then we hear we hear footsteps like the grass is rustling because there's been no rain for a long time at this point so right. the grass is basically just straw yeah it's loud and we are shh, 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 shh. it didn't sound quite like a human you know where it's right. shh, 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 shh. yeah there's it somebody who wasn't really in a rush and it was maybe methodical. semi hesitated and mm -hmm. i was like oh, oh i looked at myself and so here I, we go here I we go i knocked an arrow <laughs> and i'm getting ready to draw <laughs> draw back because i'm like if something if it's brown it's down oh, like yeah. it walks through i have a nice clean window from this blind where you can only see like the top half of my head and that's if you're looking and so as i'm getting ready to draw back because i hear the footsteps edging towards my window i see that it's a dude it's this this chunky little hunter guy. Chunky little hunter he's, guy. He's full camoed. <laughs> he's got an arrow knocked, and he's got one hand, you know, on the bow, one hand on the release, getting ready for this, right? So he's the same thing. He's looking yeah. for that cow. Yeah, he's looking <laughs> yeah. for the cow. And he doesn't see us. And I'm sitting. I'm I'm like dying, like laughing internally because I can't make noise. So I'm just sitting here giggling to myself. And I'm like, it's a, it's a hunter. Don't worry about it, right? 
So he he is looking for this cow. He walks around our little island. He even tries to peek in like where we are and doesn't see and, us. Yeah, he can't see us. Because he does this right? little like look over. Like, is it in there? And I, no. I went outside from the blind and looked. Mm-hmm. And you could barely see anything that's going on in there. Sure. So he walks all the way around. Still got his ready to draw face on everything. Because he heard a cow. Gets, gets, <laughs> gets right in front of the other window that we had on the opposite meadow. Yeah. He, he's looking, he's not seeing anything. He, you know, takes his arrow off, sets his backpack down, you know, sticks his oh, arrow back. He's about to get in the, comfy. Sticks yeah. his arrow back in the quiver, pulls out his phone. I think he was checking Onyx or something. And then puts his phone away. And I'm like, he's just playing on his phone over here. <laughs> and Dustin's like, what? And so we're looking. And this dude, and I, I don't, I don't get this. Like, <clears throat> if you're alone in the woods. Mm-hmm. Any direction, in theory, has no one looking at you, right? So this man turns around towards us, not knowing that we're there, whips his drawers down and starts (laughs) pissing, right? And we're like, bro. (laughs) And about about three quarters of the way through, he realizes that we're watching him. You guys just staring him down, dude. Just like, hard. No, like, no, no, we're not, not, we're not staring him down. No, like, uh, uh, gotta, gotta, <laughs> no staring. I go to no. Dustin. I'm like, he says it's he's like peeing. a mushroom wearing a sweater. Yeah, right? <laughs> he says he's peeing, and I'm like, no way. So I do one of these numbers because I, I got my back to him, and I do one of these numbers. I look over, and sure enough, he's got his his junk in his hand, and he's peeing, and I'm like, oh my, my god. My only regret <laughs> was, and I was telling Dustin while we we're out there, I was like, my only regret was just not yelling from the blind. Nice cock, bro. I'm going to delete that out him. now, dude. That would have spooked him. Now, we're way more than two minutes in. We're fine. Okay, I would have okay. just whistled at him. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, My thing is, my thing is, if you came into an area like a clear... I don't I don't like to pee on the edges of clearings uh, or in a clearing, mm-hmm. uh, especially one where I thought I heard an animal because, I mean, the sense of smell is yep. 10,000 times what ours is and... And let's be you're real, just, you're not just kind all of flagging us, yourself as, well, I'm Not here. all of us have clean, healthy urine streams, so there's going to be the definite strong odor of yes. whatever you've been eating, yes. right? Yes. So he sees me at this point, and he's still, you know, junk in hand, and he's like, he goes, looks, confirms that I'm there, and he's like, and I'm he like, just waves. Yeah. He just waves. He's like, I'm midstream, I'm not cutting it yeah. off, so. I'm like, all right, bro, whatever. So he sees that we're there now. Mm-hmm. He finishes his business, zips up. And then, like, once he saw us, like, the look of disappointment on this man's face. Because <laughs> then he's, like, packing up all his stuff. And, like, a child who's told we're not going to McDonald's on the way home. Yep. This man pouts his way around the entire meadow that we're in, right? Jeez. And, like I said, it's all it's all straw, right? So he's, he's walking, just shuffling his feet, like, kicking... Like, uh, making all this noise, circles the entire meadow, comes back around by us, and then went out the way that we came in. Damn. And I'm like, bruh. Yeah, he was There's throwing, enough he was for all of us. Yeah, he was throwing a fit. I wanted to check this field. Yeah, I'm just saying, when he when he left, when we saw him, like, on his final pass, like, walking out. Shoulders, shoulders down, slumped face down, down. Like, he was super bummed. Damn. And yeah. so he blew us out, and I'm like, <clears throat> bro. There's way more than enough field for the rest of us. So, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. So, that that was our experience with having, you know, two different types of hunters. One that was like, oh, no, dude, we can split this up. You know, there's plenty of room for all of us. And then the other dude's like, well, if I can't hunt here, no one right. can hunt here. So, I went out uh, with my, my buddy drew the multi-season tag. So, we went out for rifle. Mm-hmm. And I went just as a spotter, pack mule, whatever. Um and we are up on this clear cut, you know, and we're we're on top of stumps. You know, we're giant pumpkins. You can't miss us, mm-hmm. right? We're just glassing and doing whatever. And some hunter comes up out of the the far side wood line, sees us, like puts his glass. I mean, we're looking at each other the glasses, like, hello. Right, we're a couple hundred yards apart. And we're shooting rifles, mind you. That's not that far. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a shot, but... It's definitely within the wheelhouse. And he goes and posts up on the straight across from us on the other side of this thing and just sits down and it's like, hey, this is where I'm hunting now. Like, 
You get straight across from the straight people across. with deadly projectiles. You're right. Okay. Like, so he's looking at our backs. We're looking at his. Like, I don't think uh, he ever told me that story. Yeah. Well, I've got a lot, you know. But after a while, we were just like, all right, screw this. We're I know another spot. We're going up here. Like, I didn't want to sit there and get in a crossfire battle with this guy over something that walked out. Yeah, so. that's kind of ridiculous. Because really, at that point, it's who sp- you know who gets the rifle up first. Yep. I'm not doing that. And <clears throat> you know, if if you're if you're that situationally unaware of like what's behind your target, the odds of somebody getting shot is relatively high because yeah. this dude's posting up in a kill zone. Creating one going the opposite direction, like right, yeah. But yeah, so we we uh, got our spot blown out. We mm-hmm. decided, you know, we're, we're not going to try and blow ourselves out now. We're going to sit here and wait. We ended up taking a nap after that. Luckily, like I said, this is a bug free zone, so we're just chilling, straight yep. straight up, fell asleep. Yep. Uh, we, you know, started woke up i think around like 2 30 or 3 or something yeah something like that. and uh you know we're sitting there waiting a little bit longer to see if anything walks through uh and then i think about 5 30 5 o'clock yeah you were getting super restless well, I was, getting i'm just like my, my butt hurts because i've been sitting in this you know all day we literally were there for about 14 hours yeah right mm-hmm. in total I'm glad you went with him. I can't do it. And I'm like, I, I can do this like one day at a time. And that's yeah. what I was telling Dustin. I was like, I can do a morning hunt. I can do an evening hunt. But I don't want to sit for 12 hours straight again. Like, yeah. I need to do something. So we, we got up and we scouted out the rest of the meadow to see if there was anything fresh. And it's, yeah. everything was like a week or two weeks yeah. or older. Yeah, um, there was very little sign. It was very uh, disheartening. And it, sure. it, yeah, it really sucked after we saw those deer. We're like, we know the deer are chilling here. And we walked everywhere, couldn't find anything fresh. Um, and then ended up hiking up through the woods, even though we probably could have found a cleaner path. Mm-hmm. We were following some deer trail and then climbed a hill that we definitely could have gone around. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you break in a newbie, okay? Listen, people. Yeah. And uh, so we, we walked out of the logging trail. Another, like, two or three miles from where we were at going back around to the truck and then as soon as we get into the truck and get ready to leave we drive literally a half mile down the road yeah half mile and there's a deer on the side of the road like probably the ones that we had bumped the day before probably and he's like he goes oh we're gonna pull over real quick check it out this is how you road hunt (laughs) <laughs> my man jumps out of the car he tells you to drive he's huh? like he just leaves me with the podcast recording and i'm, I'm like you know, narrating this like David Attenborough or because I'm just left alone in the car. And so he he's, you know, stalking down this road and Oh, you didn't have him drive. It was gonna be quick. I didn't know how far in the uh, road okay, went. Yeah, no, he so disappears and I was like, I All right, I'm just out. gonna hit the pause button on here. I them off with the truck, so I was just like, I'm gonna hop out and maybe we can make this happen because it was gonna be quick if it was gonna happen. Sure. So I didn't want all the extra noise or the vehicle to like so did it happen? You well, no, 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 no. He disappeared, and I was like, "Well, I'm here alone in the truck, talking to myself <laughs> on a, another man's podcast. I'm gonna hit the pause button because it's gonna go radio silent here real quick because I have nothing to describe, nothing." And so he comes back, no deer, no nothing, yeah. and we scouted out that road and then left, went out, and uh, you know just tried to do some scouting while we're driving back to the house. Didn't really see anything. Saw what? What did we see? The two, the two big ass blinds set in that clear cut on the left. Mm. From there. What are you talking about? So we're driving back, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that in one of the clear cuts on the left. And mind you, this man. The, this man is a distracted driver, right? <laughs> yeah. No. <Nah. laughs> he's like, you gotta watch the road. We're when he's going. Driving. We're going like seventy, and he's staring ninety Just degrees to either side, and I'm like. I'm and I already have passenger I'm anxiety, I right? <laughs> and I'm if I'd had a wheel, I just would have been like white knuckling it. I'm like, my man, can you look at the road, please? <laughs> We're road on. I'll look, look to outside. the side. You, you, yes, focus thank you. forward, right? He's I'm, like, oh, you and my, you and my wife would get along great. Yeah. And I'm like, I go, I go. Why does she like being alive too? <laughs> so, Wait, hey, but you're alive. We're here. I am alive. We he needs a sticker that says, you know, he needs that sticker that says, yeah, but did you die? Right. Yeah. So we're driving back and I saw somebody had in this clear cut on the left, somebody had built just or set up two big ass blinds. Yeah. I don't know what they were getting ready to do that close to the road, but um, 
didn't end up seeing anything for the rest of our trip other than just scat. Like we went out to what did we go to? Like we did Olympic, see those. Uh, we did see those. Uh, um, those elk. Well, we, we saw those were on private property. Yeah, and wow. the the lesson learned there is next year. How much money do you want so I can go on your land, please, sir? That's a real thing. Thank you. That's yeah. Okay. Thing. Not all of us are dual income, no kids. Okay. So we can't just <laughs> throw living, the I'm money out the door. Life. You know. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll give you a thousand dollars. You let me go out there and shoot your elk right now. Yep. Yeah. But I, uh, I can't say that. No, there were there was a, there was a couple the shooters in that herd that we saw, but oh, yeah, they were yeah, on this farmland, mm-hmm. and you know we'd have mm-hmm. to do some talking. Plus, that was the day before hunting. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, it's like cool. That's that's that a kick a in the nards in two now the, the I've decided I don't do the you know when deer season opens and then you you, you want to go scouting for elk while you're hunting for deer whatever I, I don't do it anymore because I find elk mm-hmm. and then I come back when it's legal and I don't find any elk. Bro, I have mm. I have a buddy. He doesn't hunt, and this man sends me pictures of all these animals that he he's finds. seeing in the yeah. woods. So the reason, the whole reason I've been chasing this stupid bear through Snoqualmie Forest is because he was out there just driving on the dirt roads, saw the bear. And I'm like, <laughs> bruh. So he he goes uh, he goes somewhere driving up north and found a herd of elk up on another farm up there, and then he's in Canada right now. He sends me pictures. He's got this like eight eight point or whatever bull. <laughs> Just chilling, uh, right outside their campsite. No, just walking around because they're they're in a, a park. So he's like, I don't have to worry about getting shot. And I'm like, bro, that and this this yeah. this dude, he's huge and he's just walking full broadside because he has no problems. Yep. Hunters don't matter to him. Yep, they get the reg book. They know where they're safe. And yeah, and he just every time he leaves his house, he finds animals. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bro, I can't trip over anything. Like we bumped, we like, tripped 10 over grouse. the deer. Well. I mean, mm. yeah, and we saw uh, what was a uh, we saw a hawk trying to kill something. Yeah, in, and we saw like ten grouse. We saw ten grouse. Well, so we so saw some stuff for the season in the freezer. Do we have anything? Not Zero. yet. No, right. it's gonna happen Not in the yet. late season though. Late season hunt today. Yeah, the crossing deer, the fingers. Deer started say, coming back to the property, so it's gonna happen late season. <laughs> yeah. I well, was uh, drawn down on a deer at five yards where? on my property. Yeah. And I didn't take the shot because it had gotten so dark by that point. It's not. I couldn't even see the deer against the tree anymore. If you're five yards, you just throw the arrow. You know what? <laughs> and I would, I, yeah. I would love to do that, but the ethical. That's when the spear side comes me, in handy. Okay, the spear, right? Yep, yeah, see. we talked about that. Yeah, I could throw a spear five yards. I could have, I could have, like, if the spear was long enough, I could have just reached out and poked this deer. But all right. So, just to clarify, I want to jump back on that real quick. Because the last podcast we were talking about, I was saying like 15 yards seemed reasonable. We're out here at the flat range. I'm looking at 20 yards going, okay, 15 might have been a stretch. <laughs> but I think right, 10 look yards. Look how far well, 20 yards is. I think 10 yards is reasonable. You, I mean, you can. <laughs> I, I was listening. I was like, these dudes are not throwing a spear 10 yards and hitting a bullseye. No. Like, that is something you, you need to thank hone. You. you definitely well, yeah, need I can't to practice. do it today, but you can practice, need to practice that. practice. There would be a lot of practice. You were sounding really, really hopeful and really yes. optimistic. <laughs> I was like, there is no way. And I was like, yeah, you might be able to throw a baseball. You know what we but should do? I could, I could throw a baseball out to the 30-yard target or whatever, but I'm not going to hit the bullseye with that baseball. Right, right. exactly. No, I got you. Here's what that's, we need that's to That's why I, I volunteered to amend it. Let's bring it in a little bit closer. We need to make We do spears. need to make a spear. And, and do this. It needs this to be a video. And be like, okay, Cole, we're going to pick a target. Well, Cole Steele's got some. No, 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 I'm going to make buy one. Right, right. We're the rugged are. arts, man. We got to put stuff together. We got kids. I ain't got money to just throw away. <laughs> the, I got, sorry, sorry. I got it's stockpiles my, of, of my, wood and, and metal laying around. It's my dink out. privilege. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. exactly. Hey, you want to be a sponsor I said, if you would of like the show, supply. that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we'll, uh, donated by Rupe. Yeah, and this man can't even spell my name right. On the if my first name, which he sees every day when we're talking, mm-hmm. can't spell that right when he's when he's adding exactly. it to the yeah. description. I, it's not N I C K. No, it's just N I C. Yeah, man, sorry. And we literally had that discussion. I, too. We did. I, that's why I added the K because my other friend hates it when I drop the K. Yeah. So, but um, I mean, all in all, like man, I, it was exhausting. But mm-hmm. like I said, I'd never done that before. That was that was the first real hunting trip I've been on. Because uh, I mean, I remember when I was very, very little, vaguely, 
Like, my dad taking me out once, and I got to shoot the rifle, but we didn't ever see any deer. He just took me out to let me shoot the rifle. Sure. But I'd never, ever been on a, a trip before, a hunting trip at all. So, when... Now, everyone has their own flow, their own way of doing it. Please feel free to comment on Instagram what uh, um, what your preferred method is. But I know for me, I like to get in just before sunup, you know, and I like to just get, I don't know, 50, 100 yards in off the whatever road I came in on. And then I, I'll start slowing around till, you know, it's, it's getting light enough to kind of sit. Sit for the first hour hour and a half because that's their that's when they're moving around the most they're heading from the fields to the beds or whatever they're doing and they're busy moving mm-hmm. so if i'm stationary the odds are they're going to come past me after that you know you're in the middle of the day time frame they're bedded so i'm gonna go kick them up i'm gonna go walk around try to find them try to get into an area maybe i can smell them something if I don't have any luck then, then it's that, you know, hour or two before sunset when they start getting back up again, I'll go sit down again. Of course, for me, I'm usually tired by that point, so I don't mind. But no, I can't do the full day sits. I've seen people do it. They're like, nope, something's coming through here. I guarantee it. And they'll just sit. From I mean, I it's, it's it. a special talent to have that much patience. And I can tell when I'm starting to get bored. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right. But for me, like, so far with my, like, solo hunts, because, I, like I said, I'm still chasing bears, it's, I, I get out early, like, and start walking and stalking, seeing if I can find any, you know, fresh sign, and I'm walking around, and then what he showed me when we were out, uh, out in Olympic National or whatever, is kind of soaking the trail that you're on with your, with your prey calls, and, and then... You know, you go one way making calls and you kind of let it soak and you come back to, you know, maybe something's investigating the noise that you were making on your way in and you catch them on your way out. Right. So I'm, I'm constantly moving. If I'm, if I'm out solo hunting, I'm like trying to find where there's any sort of sign. And if I can find something, then I'll probably sit. But if I don't see anything that's, you know, super fresh, then I'm like, all right, well, I need to keep moving because they're moving still or they have moved right. and either I'll bump something or I will, you know, get to some, where something's fresher and then stumble I into start, an area where yeah. it looks promising. Absolutely. And, I mean, if I could just be like one of these hikers where I'd like trip over a cougar or something, that'd be great. That'd be great. But, yeah. I, you know, all in all, it was, it was a good trip and I, I learned a lot, but I also felt validated in some of the stuff that I had learned previously just from, like, looking uh, online. Sure. You know, and, and building my knowledge base because, I mean, we have all, all of, of human history at our fingertips daily, right? So you can learn a lot. I've, I've encapsulated, like, a good 100 years total of archery in the last <laughs> year just from watching YouTube videos and researching things. And, you know, I didn't feel as lost in the woods as I thought I was going to feel when I went out there. And that, that was nice. And sure. Dustin was, you know, nice enough to, he wasn't yelling at me or anything. Cause I, I probably was making a lot of noise. I know when we got there on day one, I got, I got out of the car and I go, <laughs> and, and I'm, we're, we're in his truck. Right? right. And I'm like, okay, it's an older truck. I need to make sure that what it's, it's not new. No. But I'm like, all right, I'm going to make sure that the door closes. I'm sorry, what year is your truck? Oh, uh, it's a uh, 09. It's an 09. That's right. my man. That is I drive a 2000, decade. so. Yeah, it's, it's an 09. Yeah, I thought it was pretty new and fancy. No, I bought it, <laughs> I bought it used. But yeah, I'm, I'm like, all right, well, I got to close the door. I shut the door too hard. And that, you know, that's how we found that couple that was down there. Like, yeah, we heard the door slam. I was like, oh, maybe we should move. I'm like, my bad. <laughs> my, my favorite thing that I... Uh, First year hunting, um, no correction, it was my second year hunting, but it was the first time hunting with other people. So we get out, we're in there, again, a half hour, 45 before sunup, and, you know, we're doing the quiet door shuts, whatever. They, they warned me. They were nice enough to warn me. Like, hey, he didn't, now that was one thing, he did not warn me. And, because uh, I would have been quiet. Right. Well, we get out, and it's kind of dark, and I figured, man, we just pulled our truck into this like right on the edge of this clear cut we can see the clear cut 
And so I'm not thinking anything of it. You know, I'm all excited. I'm getting my gear on. I'm doing all that. And my dad, he's just stepped off the side and stood up on a stump. And he's just standing there doing nothing. I'm over here thinking, get your gear on, dude. What are you doing? He pulls up his binos and right there, dude. Right at the wood line, there's a herd. Let's go get him. And they were on their way to the wood line if I hadn't, if he hadn't stepped up there, if I had finished getting all my gear on and then looked, would have never seen him. Well, I took, I, I took the wife out to some private property uh, uh, we were given permission to use as long as, like, you know, we shoot any coyotes we see, right? And, That's a good deal. And so we're setting up the blind. Wife goes, hey, should we bring our boats with us? I'm like, well, there's two of us. If we bring all of our stuff... We can get set up really quickly, go get the bows, and we're fine. Nope. To get this, dude. <laughs> so I'm in the blind. Yep. I've set it up. I'm making sure we have clear lanes, tons of visibility. And looking directly out of the blind, not 35 yards in front of me, I see a little head pop up. And it's this, it's this young buck, right? He's, he's shootable. Yeah. Not anything that you'd write home about, but you can't eat antlers, right? Right. So he pops his, his head, and I'm like... I turn to my wife, I'm like, do not move, right? So he's he walking up the hill, because he was munching on some blackberries or whatever, walks up the hill, sees us, and it's like, you know, like that those scenes in the TV shows where like two people know that one of them isn't supposed to be there, right. and they're just kind of <laughs> staring at each other, and I'm, I'm frozen, because I don't, we don't have our bows, right? Because we're bringing all the stuff, and he walks up there, and he gets up, and he's doing that little deer thing where he's like, Kind of turns to the side and then stomps a foot and like mm-hmm. does a little snort and stuff. I'm like, oh, you're a tough guy, aren't you? So he walks up there and he's kind of, and you can tell how young he is because he's like his little tail's wagging. He's kind of curious, spinning in circles, trying sure. to see if we're going to do anything. And we're not doing anything. Like right. we're frozen. We might as well have been statues at this point. And then he walks by and as soon as he gets up, he's not three yards from us. And I'm like, I could strangle this man. <laughs> and he, then he, he just leaps into the air and bounds off into, you know, the opposite side of the property. And I'm like, lesson learned. Someone has to be shooting. Someone needs to have their yep. bow. Because, I mean, we would have punched one tag had, you know, I sure. just said, yeah, bring your bow. Yep. Absolutely. There's always going to be one shooter. And I, I know that just along that whole idea, there always has to be a shooter, right? Uh, uh, another one, Dustin and I go out, we designate the shooter. Like if, if obviously let's say I designate Dustin shooter, he gets to walk point, you know, I'm going to be 20 yards behind him or so 10 yards behind him. You know, now of course, if something pops up behind me, we're not going to rearrange the world so that he can get a shot. I'm going to take the shot, but yeah, we kind of talked about that well, on day one. He asked me, like, what is the... Because um, I wanted to make sure I was being polite and using proper etiquette. I'm like, okay, so if we see something, how do we determine who's being, you know, who's shooting it? Because we he's were like, walking shoulder to shoulder, basically, down a logging road. Yeah. So it was just... It was and like, he's like, well, if it's on my side, I'll take the shot. And if it's on your side, you'll take the shot. Because, uh, you know, being new to all this, I want to go out here and he's, you know, getting ready to take down... The, the bull of a lifetime. And yeah, I'm just like, right. cacao! <laughs> right? Like, Go oh. wing one by its head and scare it. Oh, thanks. Well, I I know that I'm not that bad of a shot. But I'm teasing. I'm I, don't, to be a good I don't want to, like, snipe somebody's, you know, trophy or whatever. Like, I'm just getting lucky on my first day. Take a shot that I probably shouldn't have taken because, you know, he's on my left. I turn left, whiz one right past his head into an animal, right? And it's like, you know, I don't want to be impolite. Right. Since I'm he's just being just courteous to be clear, enough. even if you are the shooter, never whiz one by my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's never polite. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, it was cool because uh, we talked about a lot of things, and I, I, I hope you learned a lot that weekend. Sunday, all we did was we hooked up on a, a, a trail that I had found. You know that trail that I was telling you where there's like 16 uh, piles of bear poo yeah. and a quarter mile or whatever that we went and the IBS that road. bear we're trying to yeah the IBS <laughs> bear mm-hmm. Bob with an irritable bowel anyway um, then yeah. what happened <laughs> and so yeah we walked down that road and saw a couple new uh, piles but nice. uh, didn't end up uh, seeing a bear um, did talk to a coyote possibly uh, but he never came in and I, I think that the coyote was probably too entertained with whatever he had found because we were above some farms, so mm. I assumed that he was down there trying to cause trouble with some chickens, and that's why he didn't want to come talk to us. 
I just, I, as soon as I heard that call, like that, the, uh, that coyote, like chatty call, not like they're yipping and yowling like they right. do at night, but they, they have a, a call, you know, that is very distinctly coyote. I'm like, bro, there's a coyote probably 150 yards I'm like, off of this I don't know, hill. man. How do you know that? And he goes, oh, it's on this game I play. So I play, I play <laughs> check it out though. Check it out. There's a, there's a video game called Hunter, the Call of the Wild. Okay. And they, they use real world data, real world animal sounds. Like you will you will know okay. uh-huh. what an animal sounds like. In the same way I learned how to drive manual cars from playing video games. <laughs> I've learned animal calls from these video games too. And I know that it's, you know, a recording or whatever, but you can at least get an idea. You get a sense for it. Yeah. And I'm like, I know that's a coyote. That's not a dog. I know what they sound like. Sure. So, but well, th- this has been great. Um, I'm glad that we got to recount this whole thing. Part two of our 100 part series. It's part something. It's part hilarious, part inappropriate, mm. um, and part a learning experience. So that's that's like all all the key fronts, right? Right. Do you do you got a jet, David? No, I just I don't. I'm gonna go shoot as soon as we're done. Oh, you bring okay. your bow. Uh, I did. I might sling a couple arrows before nice. before we leave. The one thing I did want to touch on that uh, we talked about last week was uh, we had not to go completely off of a hunting. But we're gonna go. Completely yeah, but we're off. gonna go completely off here. Uh, <laughs> so remember how you had told me that Carol Baskin had been arrested? Yeah. I couldn't find anything that said she'd been arrested. But uh, what I did find is that now she owns. The Tiger King's property. How did that happen? She subpoenaed the court or went through court proceedings or whatever to like, I don't know. She now owns it. And she's going to start her own reality TV show. Oh, my God. Uh, which I'm not going to watch at you all. Will. You no, will. No, I'm not. I yeah, because your wife's going to get it. into it. She's going to make no, you watch she, it. No, she didn't even watch Tiger King. She was telling me. She's like, don't watch it. Don't watch it. Oh, well, one of you. And, and that, I, that is my I clicked response, on too. Not watching this. Yeah, she's like, don't get Don't it. make stupid people famous. Exactly. Oh, man. Or president. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. We have a YouTube channel, so let's oh, not yeah, promote yeah, that too yeah, hard. Yeah, we yeah, want yeah, viewers. Yeah. Hey, you guys aren't stupid. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then... And then... That's about... Yeah, so I, I don't know. That whole... With that Tiger King thing, I watched, I think, two episodes, and I just, my brain couldn't take it. I just, no, this is ridiculous. The the thing that I find most upsetting about that is not all their lives or whatever, but these are, these are trash people who have somehow gained enough currency to purchase not one, but multiple big cats. And I right. want to know what money moves these people were making that allowed them, despite their lifetime of poor decision-making, to acquire enough coin to purchase a tiger, yeah. right? Because, like, as someone who worked, I, I think that I work hard. You know, I earn money legally. I don't make illegal money moves. Well, there's your problem. But I'm like, how is it these people have it so easy? <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I don't, don't want to own a big cat. I just want easy. the money that I could purchase a big cat. Well, I mean, it's right. only like three grand for a tiger cub. Only. That's what the, they were saying really? in the show. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Three to four grand for a tiger cub. You're telling me it is cheaper to buy a tiger cub yep. than it is to buy like a purebred Florida and you wanted to buy one Shiba from the tiger Inu or King. something. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that is, but yes, I'm telling you, Japanese dog. I'm like literally quoting the the show, season one, episode two, I think it was, where wow. they were talking about tiger cub prices. And it's like three to five grand for you, a tiger cub. By keeping that memory, mm-hmm. keeping that in your brain, you have pushed out something important. Yeah, like, like I a, brought a, like a substance child's to this conversation here right now. That's why I retained it right for this moment right here. Now we can delete. Yep. <laughs> now I can brain dump that because I don't need it anymore. It's all this has been recorded and I can refer to I'm going to ask you in like six months on a podcast, how much does a Tiger Cub cost just to see if it's still in there? <laughs> I mean, I, I probably lost something <laughs> just by listening to it. Oh, oh ouch. So, uh... And something else I wanted to talk about, uh, I recently uh, saw a post on Facebook. Somebody was making a stab at Netflix for not having enough, like, hunting shows on Netflix. Because really all they have is a meat eater. So I was like, is that true? And I went on and, like, yeah, there might be movies or whatever that, like, 
uh, kind of have a hunter in them Here's in one the way thing, or whatever, but they don't have shows. Here's the thing. Hunting programs or hunting programming has always been in the minority mm-hmm. when it comes to television content. Right. And the the circle, I, I often use a Venn diagram to describe everything. And the circle in circle, for people who have Netflix subscriptions and people who are super passionate about hunting, is very small. I don't know. I mean, they're I used to be bigger I, than you think. I mean, meat eater is really popular, and it's sure, not just among but, the hunting community. But it is one show, mm-hmm. and I can remember from being a child, there was like a dedicated hunting channel. Like you had all channel. these, yeah. That doesn't exist anymore. I don't think that's moved entirely almost to YouTube. I would assume. Given the um, content that you find it's on, it's on YouTube. cable, but I don't know what Who provider has it's cable. I, <laughs> I was like, well, cable you can't is going the way that Doodle Bird doesn't like, exist anymore. When I'm pretty sure it still does. It's, it's just still, the platform that it's on. Is the antiquated. people that consume hunting content are are still a smaller portion yeah. of the people that pay Netflix bills, right? Right. So they're not. They're going to cater to what makes them money, which is sure. why you have the Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. You've got. Uh, Tiger King, you know the the garbage content. That, <laughs> That's very tabloid. Well, you have what well, we call content. it garbage content, but but you have content that is engaging to doesn't matter what your interests are. Sure, let's take uh, pick a show that ran for a long time, uh, Survivor. Yep. Right. Oh my god. Yeah. That like it doesn't matter if you're ever going to be on an island trying to survive. Yep. It's you would watch thing. the show because they put in enough different elements that you could go, I like this part of it and the rest of it's tolerable. Or you might like multiple. Anyway, the problem you get in with like a hunting show, how do you reach that same wide wide based audience off of something, you know, we're going to go stock this out. So Meat Eater does that with celebrity guests. Okay, I see that. To a point, yep. But you've done that, Mm -hmm. right? So you have that one figure. So and you have to be careful too because if you start trying to make it like a game show or a competition or whatever then you get a lot of animal rights activists you get a lot of them right or wrong I'm not going to argue that but you will get a lot of kickback that's going to affect whether the show works or not so what I was going to say is is that I hear what you're saying and I agree with you but there are uh, uh, people that exist that are creating content that is view, like in my opinion would be like of interest to multiple people that aren't just the hunting community. And one of those people that I, I like truly cherish as a content creator would be Donnie Vincent. Have you watched any of his stuff? Oh my God, it's amazing. Like the cinematography quality, the story that he tells. And he he's uh, a biologist who uh, turned hunter basically. And uh, his stuff is just amazing. Um, there's a, a recent video or movie that uh, Stephen Rinella did called Stars in the Sky, which mm-hmm. I was telling you about yep. earlier, is amazing because it looks at hunting from a conservation perspective, but also allows uh, people who don't agree with hunting necessarily for a way of a- ascertaining your food, if you will. Uh, one of the guys, I can't remember his name, uh, he's in there voicing his opinions on, on stuff. And so it kind of cool because it illustrates both sides. Um, and it's very interesting to watch. But there's there's a, a lot of people out there that are like that, but they're not on Netflix. Right. Okay. And so it's so just kind of frustrating that we, there's not a wider spectrum here's, there. Here's what that. I would say. I would liken it to this. You love steak, right? Sure. A, a, a thick, juicy, well-cooked steak. You don't want it burned. You want it perfectly cooked to perfection, you know, exactly the way you like that, right? Sure. You don't eat that every day, though, right? No. I no, mean, I you would if to. you could, I right? can't afford to. <laughs> now, a lot of people, Yeah, I mean, you like popcorn, right? Sure. You like McDonald's? I, I, I is, get where you're going. The, yeah, the point yeah. is, don't eat that stuff every day. Yeah, the point is, you know, everybody loves whatever their favorite perfectly cooked food is and you enjoy consuming that you know on an irregular or semi-regular basis but the vast majority of stuff that you find on netflix is that popcorn and cheeseburger content because that's what people come for they want their their bite-sized junk tv they're not people are not watching the best of the best programming constantly on netflix and you know 
finding finding something that caters to that that stake sort of demographic in hunting is difficult because you know in a lot of our media we also portray hunters as like these goofy rednecks right like unfortunately you know you've got your your duck dynasty types where it's you know just they they want these over the top personalities yeah you know th- these caricatures of human beings and that doesn't appeal to everybody whereas you look at like somebody like Steve Ranella who is a competent you know human being outside of being a, a Very consummate hunter writer, right yeah. it's not oh, Yosemite Sam type you know it's you're not you don't have to be a crazy duck dynasty person it's it's something that can appeal to a broader range. Can and I ask a question? Is it the beard that made you draw that like comparison? The Yosemite Sam versus Duck Dynasty because they well, both it's, have it's, these epic long like, beards. I feel like that's the only thing that you, really you makes take, them similar. <laughs> the Duck Dynasty people, I don't know them personally. I just know what I've seen in media of them and and people like them. It's likened to a parody of an actual human being, right? Because I'm sure they're not like that in real right. life. In the same way, Elmer Fudd doesn't represent all hunters, mm-hmm. you know? it's People want that over-the-top, you know, larger-than-life sort of personality. Right. That's the entertainment value. Yeah. That's the that's Because, I mean, nobody's watching Survivor to learn survival skills. They're Perfect. watching it to see who, you know, Christina... Survives. Does Christina screw over Mike? <laughs> because they're both looking for a coconut or something, right? right? Which is the same reason The Walking Dead isn't about zombies. It's about, you know... Right. right. Or Game of Thrones. It's a soap opera that happens to have sometimes zombies, dragons, and or nudity. <laughs> <laughs> you know way too much about Game of Thrones. I've not seen one episode. Seriously? It, not seen one, one, one episode. One of the biggest cultural nope. phenomenons in yep. the last decade, and you know yeah. nothing. And yet you didn't watch Tiger King. Yeah. I haven't finished it because no, I don't have I don't, cable, but... Don't, don't bother. Right. No, I, I read the books. I know how it ends. But um, do you though? Because George R. R. Martin's still sitting on that last book. Yeah. yeah. And he's gonna, he's gonna die before that book gets created, and it's gonna be ironic with the, his love of killing off characters. Oh, it's the gonna fact be, that he will sure. die before it gets finished, so nothing will happen, is the biggest like George R. R. Martin twist that yeah. can happen in I this series. I feel like we just Has anyone watch the <laughs> South took Park a whole Twilight. Like, yeah. Well, that's what we're good at. You guys this has like been the most on point conversation no on reality we've ever had. The, the like South this, Park this Game episode. Of episode. Oh no, this God. episode of, has been the most tracking down the line of stories and conversations I think we've ever had as a podcast. It's, it's so coherent. Great, it's a great episode. Yeah, Everybody should listen to it. Uh, you're welcome. Pass it on. Like, share, subscribe. So. With that, though, I think we have some shooting to get to. I mean, we could and go throw a couple. Uh, yeah, it's. And you look like you're doing. antsy over there. Like, you man, I've always well, been sitting too I've long. I finally have been sitting too long. He already told us he couldn't do this. He's like, I can't sit for. This yeah, long. right. No, we're, this, well, we've got six it. more hours that we're gonna record. Yeah, yeah we're get, This is gonna be the ep, the epoch, the penultimate podcast exactly. episode. Exactly. <laughs> this is so, gonna make our our channel. I am right. actually really, really anxious to get back out there, just because <laughs> I finally have all of the uh, components for my uh, freestyle setup. I'm so happy and for you. Your stab is enormous. It is. Um, but I, I think, haven't I think got my sight dialed in yet, and we've got the the you know archery world class, the indoor classic coming up this month, and I've got a whole brand new setup that's not dialed in yet. It's gonna be dope to see both of us fail. Uh, uh, just give it, you know, give your sight <laughs> like, like five I, clicks like, to the right. My, I have a I have a bow. I, I just put a new rest on it, that blade, and I haven't paper tuned it. Uh, you see, that Nothing. terrifies me. Now, yeah. I, I, now, you know, I mean, I've never competed uh, in, like, uh, indoor, but I've shot them, you know, just for practice. And I can shoot in the 290s, you know. Uh, I think it was my best has been, like, a 295. Right. No, 294. 294. Well, you're going to need... So six points down was... Yeah, I know. I No, not closer to. You need to hit three and have a really high X count if you want to win. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, but that was with my hunting setup, right? Yeah. 0.19 pins, fixed, short stabilizer, like, now I've got... You can only improve. Right. Now I've got the full freestyle, and I can't hit the broadside of a barn with it, and I'm, it's... I feel like once I get it dialed, it'll be there, but... Is it humbling? 
It is. It is very humbling. And it was one of those things we talked about earlier that I wanted the new challenge and mm-hmm. it is being a challenge. Uh, but I think it's like, you know, that going to the gym or starting any new habit, whatever, yeah. it's that initial hump that you have to get over. Mm-hmm. Like, and then once you, once you've broke that wall, then it's all going to be just downhill. Well, and you know, on the Archer World podcast, Bodhi actually said basically what you just said right now in an interview with, with Joe is that, you know, once he hit 300, yeah, he didn't find it hard to hit 300 anymore. Now, I'm <laughs> Bodhi is an exceptional yeah, shooter. That guy okay, is, um, so take that with insane. a grain of salt. But there's there's a there's a thing to that, you know. And, this, uh, and there, there, I can think of other things that I've done in life where it was like, man, it was really hard doing an ollie on my skateboard. And then once I did it. I can right. do it. Once over it and over. clicked, and your yeah. body can mm-hmm. can yeah, do it, your body can repeat it. You knew all the mechanics involved to make it happen, and so then you just have to work at doing it over and over and over again. And so now he's like, I I I, I looked up to a fourteen year old. This is crazy. <laughs> His goal, what he thinks would be really cool, is to not just go to Vegas, but to be the first shooter to go to Vegas and qualify for the the shoot down mm-hmm. with a nine hundred. With ninety X's, that's perfect. Yep. That's shooting it clean. Like that is it, insane. No, I mean, I, as far as I know, no one's done it. And I, you know what? I'd I'd love to see him do it. Oh, I. I, me in my head, I look on at my it, shoulders. I look at more like realistically. I could I could come out here and let's say I get good enough, I can shoot you know a three hundred round with you know perfect X's out here. No one's watching me. You go down to Vegas. You're in the middle of that auditorium. It's a different story. So yeah, I, I agree 100%, especially for us. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're talking specifically of Bodie and thereby talking about his dad, yeah. Joel Turner. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he could do it. Right. But you would also wouldn't be surprised if it took a couple X's off yeah. his scorecard. But the whole, you know, controlled, you know, what is it? Controlled process shooting mm-hmm. uh, is a, a process of mentally... It's a mental game before it's a physical game for them, for his program. Mm. Um, and so, if anyone's got a chance to pull it, I mean, you know if you I mean, study mental first, like, you're, yeah. He, he I'm, has I'm the best chance of somebody doing it. He and really it, that's a direct He's result of... He's an amazing of, coach in his yeah. corner to help so, him. I mean, and, for me, I know I'd, I'd crack. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, my first arrow would be like an eight. I'm like, well, I'm out. Now I can shoot good. Uh, uh, you know? <laughs> I'd probably wing one off into the stands. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry. For, I'm, I'm picturing like someone getting a foul ball. You know, <laughs> it's, I got the arrow. I caught it. And it's like through the palm. <laughs> right, through his hand. Like, oh. Yeah, I was here. I'll, I'll go sign the, sign the show. Wait till he's out of the hospital and <laughs> sign his <laughs> scar, you know. All right. Well, we have anything else functional to talk about today? Uh, I mean, we could probably draw this out if we really wanted to, but I think that's going to be it for today. I mean, I'm feeling pretty good. I do like, uh, I feel like you have brought an awesome dynamic to the conversation um, recently. And so I think this is, uh, this has probably been one of my, my, my favorite Hey, anytime, you know, it's a pleasure to hang out, and I I mean, I like chatting with you guys, you know, not on the podcast, but anytime you guys want me to come talk about something, shoot the shit. Okay. I guess I, I mean, shoot the dookie. There you go. Thank you. (laughs) We're way more than Because we're for kids. (laughs) Oh, come on. Hey, you know. I I, I like to... We don't have a lot of followers. I don't want to lose even one, (laughs) so, you know. Hey, man, I'm right here. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> one follower. And one follower that comments is in the car right now. Um, no, I, I, I'm good if you're good. All right. Cool. We'll see everybody next week. Bye.